let's go. The new styling in the front here with really large double kidney look. Wow, really impressive already here for their small SUV. And also here these contrasting vertical fins. The air intake on the inside is adaptive. And you can see the new LED lamps. These ones here, the optional adaptive LED lamps. And then they also have a modern daytime the running light signature. And the turning indicators here replace the front daytime running light. Looks really fancy, doesn't it? The length at 4 meters 50 or 177 inches, so around about 5 centimeters or 2 inches longer than the previous generation. And wheels from 17 to 20 inch. These here are 18 inch but with winter tires so they look a little bit more balloonish. You can get a more you like a cooler or more aggressive look with summer tires and also bigger wheels but then you might also lose some comfort if you go too big frames around the windows it always depends on which version you pick and if you go for a shadow line or not and so on you really have to go deep into the configurator because they're different possibilities and here also with the high gloss and in the lower part however you can also get it in a more contrasting look with the x line in the rear with a more modern tail lamp design here and the m sport has these dark inserts right here the color by the way is storm bay metallic and turning indicators in the rear well hmm they don't look that spectacular do they the car key is extremely light indeed as here also in the M Sport, the beautiful colors. Then flush door handles here, they always stay like this and they fold up like this. And I mean, the feedback is not too bad. Then door closing sound is actually quite good. Not too bad, but also not the best ones we've heard. Inside of the doors, here with soft touch sensor tech, you can also get that one as well as for the dashboard. And here the Harman Kardon sound system with a nice design visualization. And also the buttons at the inside of the doors resonates a very good quality indeed. Here the M Sport steering wheel looks more spectacular, especially in here in that lower area. That's pretty cool. And still real buttons at the steering wheel. That's what we really prefer, don't we? Depending on the market, you'd start with fabric seats as base. Then the M Sport comes usually with Alcantara on the inside, Sensatec outside, and here these ones are the full perforated Sensatec seats. Here the steering wheel manually up and down, in and out, very smooth process. And with 189 or 602, I still have enough headroom left, although this one here is equipped with the panoramic roof. You can also open that one, and there's also a shade to make it darker. Interior overview, revolutionary change, completely different. Nice styling right here and also with the integration of the ambient lighting. Sensatec dashboard is an option that feels really nicely. And then the screen is like one curved display. The left side 10.25 inch, right side 10.7 inch. But the naming is strange. This one is called control display and this one is called info display because this is here BMW OS 8 now. It has more functionality. It's not as easy to control as the old one. You get used to it bit by bit. For example, here interior lighting you can control right here, the ambient lighting. Then you can also pick the different colors right here and they change accordingly here. For example, that looks actually very fancy indeed. The home menu is either like this or there's another home menu um, when you press it here then for the whole vehicle overview and some hotkeys here on the left side for example also to the car internal GPS and it's actually quite responsive and the Harman Kardon sound system actually does a very nice job here in this uh, segment here. Very nice one indeed. Just this climate unit here, it is always in the screen. That's not to my liking, at least it always stays in this position. And this is the whole climate menu where you can also, for example, activate the steering wheel heating or the seat heating. And you can also deactivate or activate the AC now. So this has been upgraded from the very early version. And the rear view camera, well, does the job definitely not bad. Resolution maybe could be a little bit better, but it's also quite dark now outside. And what's also cool here, in the CarPlay mode, you can have Apple Maps also on the left side in the instruments or with Android Auto, it would work with Google Maps. These two possibilities. Digital instruments, you can see here the RPMs can turn up in the right side. You can also change the whole layout of that. For example, here, like this or like this, but I more prefer the layout where you can still see the RPM, it's more classic layout. And then also content-wise, you can, for example, also have 
you know, this compass here, but you can also induce the speed here in the middle part. That's what I would actually use for driving. And the head-up display, very clear and crisp to read, a helpful feature. And do you see this flying middle console? This is taken over from the BMW iX, from the big EV SUV. So some styling elements then also in the compact premium SUV. But this is also functional, where in a way, because there's a lot of storage space then underneath. Here in the lower middle console, it's very interesting. You have this kind of little seat belt here for your smartphone. That way you can secure it so it doesn't fly all over the place while driving. And when I take it out, you can see actually you have these holes back there and they suck away the hot hair, hot hair, <laughs> okay, hot air from the inductive charging pad at the smartphone so it doesn't overheat. And you have these cup holders, not adaptive though, that's hit and miss. And here two USB-C chargers. On top of the flying middle console, you start, stop the vehicle. This is here the shifting lever here for drive or sports mode. So I'm going to show you that reverse. And then here in the middle part, you have at least still a manual volume jog. That's good to have. And here you pick the driving modes. However, you always have to select them then in the touchscreen. Here, for example, the sport mode to confirm it once again. So not the quickest solution while driving. And finally here, the middle console, you open it here and it folds open and you have some more space underneath. Inside of the doors in the rear, this material here is rather hardback, but at least it has some structure, softer than here for your elbows. Beautiful styling from the Harman Kardon sound system. And then you can see here, the rear interior of the new generation, also with the perforation on the rear seats, if you went for this very interior. And it's kind of hard back here at the recess, at the back part of the seats. Let's see how that one turns out as for the leg room. Rear seating position, well, as the seat is, I would be driving here, tall person and 189 or 6 foot 2 in the back. There is some headroom left, although this is equipped with the panoramic roof, which gives a great view indeed. Wow, and it's so wide here in the, in the, in the rear. It's great for the rear passengers. And you can also change that, how you want that angle. You can make it more upright but you can also put it more in the back. The trunk at 540 up to 1,600 liters, 50 liters more than before. However, you lose it again when you go for the EV or the plug-in hybrid version. However, with the EV and the plug-in hybrid, it's not such a problem because here above that, you don't lose too much. It's just what you have underneath. And there we have even more space here in the pure petrol version, for example. A wide variety of engine choices. That is the current BMW strategy. So here you have two liter four cylinder diesel, a 1.5 liter three cylinder petrol engine, the two liter four cylinder petrol engine we have here. Today is 23i. There's also a more powerful 28i version available in the US. Then there's also a plug-in hybrid drivetrain based on the three-cylinder petrol engine and an all-EV version, the BMW iX1. This one here, the 23i, has an acceleration figure of around 7 seconds. The 28i for the US would be a little bit faster, around 6 seconds in the acceleration figure. And I can already tell you the fuel economy here is less than 7 liters in 1 km, so it's about 35 mpg US and about 45 mbg UK, and the same consumption figure will also more or less count for the 28i. Let's go. the speed limit just when it's wet. Well, it's reasonably quick, of course, it's not the fastest here overall with this 23i, around seven seconds in the acceleration figure from zero, and the 28i, which would be the corresponding model in the US with a little bit more power, is second quicker, about six seconds than in the acceleration figure. But they have the same base in the two liter four cylinder. So acceleration wise, yeah, it's not the quickest one. It's the small X1, the compact SUV, but it feels so great on the Autobahn. We have the adaptive M suspension here. That means when I'm in sport mode, I have a little bit stiffer feedback from the suspension. The M Sport suspension, again, the adaptive style is also 50 millimeters or 0.6 inch lower. And it just gives me such a great control here on the German Autobahn. Really nice, so flawless suspension setup. So it's stiff enough, sporty enough, but at the same time, 
it's also comfortable enough. If you want to see more of the BMW iX1, the EV version, we have it here in our review of the X1 versus iX1, or one of the competitors is of course also the Mercedes GLA.